Isaiah 51, Colossians, the 51st book of the Bible. Hearken to me. It's God speaking. Hearken to me. He that follow after righteousness. So you want to be righteous, you want to do right, you got to hearken to God. I mean, you, there are some people out there, the preacher is the God. What the preacher says is what God says. Ye that seek the Lord. You seek the Lord, you got to hearken to God. There are plenty of people out there that follow men. Man is sin. Look onto the rock. The rock. Get that. The rock. The rock is the Lord Jesus Christ. Not a rock. Not onto a rock, but the rock. Whence ye are hewn. And to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. You get yourself in troubles. You get yourself in problems. You dig your own hole. The expression is. Well, admit your sins. Admit your wrongdoing. And turn back to God and get right. But he's speaking to the nation of Israel, and they're an idolatry. We've been doing chapter after chapter after chapter, and God's saying, you dig in a pit. You're not looking to the rock. You know, one of the things was, it said in the scriptures, that when Moses made that brazen serpent, they were to look and live. Well, you know what the problem was? They stopped looking and living. They started worshiping it and called it, uh, I forgot the name, Naphtali or something like that. They took something that was God and they turned it into a God. They're not looking to the rock. The rock that gave them water, that flinty rock. In other words, they've forgotten what God has done for them. You know, there are people who will say, well, show me God. Throughout the life of Israel, in the wilderness, books of Numbers, the books of Exodus, Deuteronomy... God showed himself over and over and over. And when Joshua brought them in the land, gave them following the land that God promised them. What is the last words of Joshua? As for me, my house, we're going to serve the Lord. If you want to serve the gods on this side of the flood, go ahead, but it's wrong. Not quote that scripture. Quote. And he has a little lesson with him. Get rid of the gods. Yeah, we'll serve the Lord. And it's never recorded they got rid of the gods at the end of Joshua's life. All the wonderful things that God has done for him. He's looked to the rock. What rock? That rock that gave you water in the wilderness. Remember, you didn't have to go to uh, Payless to get shoes. Remember, you didn't have to go to Walmart and buy clothing. You know, there was no McDonald's. There was no restaurants along the way. And yet, you were full. You know, there's only one thing that Israel did not have in that wilderness. They didn't have strong drink. They didn't have alcohol. Check your Bible. Look unto Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah that buried you. So that rules out Ishmael. That rules out the Arabians. Because it was Abram. I forgot her name. Hagar. Abram. Not Abraham. Abraham was named after Hagar. After Ishmael. It's a big difference. And for those people of the Islamic uh, religion, or religion and those of Ishmael and all that, you see that Abram? A-B-R-A-H-A-M. Well, God put a ha in the middle to say, ha ha on you. It's Isaac and Jacob. It's not Ishmael. Ha. Check it out. For I called him alone. And the problem was he brought Lot. And blessed him. And increased him. How many descendants are there of Abraham, of just Isaac and Jacob today? I assume that every county in America has a Jewish graveyard. At least every state, I can say, hopefully safely say that. There's a Jewish person buried at least in all 50 states. 
Think about all the Jews that were killed during World War II. Think about all the Jews that were killed in Nebuchadnezzar's time. Think about all the Jews that were killed in Titus' time. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. And that's exactly what it is today. It's a waste place. I was talking to a guy the other day. He, he's been to uh, Jerusalem and Israel four or five times. Right? I said, you know, that's good. But you know what? The place is a waste. I'd rather go there when the king will show me and when the king will fix the place up and when the king will, will take me through the steps and where actually things happen. And he kind of chuckled. I said, What's there to chuckle about? You got a bunch of religions over there. You got to pay money to show things that are not true. I am told, I don't know, you could be wrong, but you know, that Jesus died in Jerusalem. That's not the Bible. And he will make her wilderness like Eden, a fruitful, populous growth of vegetation. I'm trying to think of the word there. My brain has just got over the flu, so I'm paradise. And her desert like the garden of the Lord. Now see, Eden. Her desert like the garden of the Lord. The garden wasn't called the garden Eden. Go back in Genesis chapter 2 and read it. It's the garden of Eden. Eden was a wonderful place and there was a garden. The garden that was in Eden was much beautiful as best than, than Eden was. And Eden was wonderful. In her deserts like the garden of the Lord, joy and gladness shall be found therein. It's not today. You may pick up the newspaper tomorrow morning and find out they've been launching missiles again. You pick up the, you know, the radio, turn to the dial, and they're fighting again. They're carrying right now in the streets, they're carrying uh, rifles on their shoulders. You may be having a, a, a cappuccino or iced coffee at a little cafe kind of, you know, eating on the, the tables outside and the place blow up. Joy and gladness shall be found there, therein. Thanksgiving in the voice of melody. They got the wailing wall over there. And you go over there, they're wailing. They're upset. Hearken unto me, my people. And that's not America. That's the Jew. And give ear unto me, O my nation. That's not America. He said, look unto Abraham your father. For, the, for a law shall proceed from me. And I will make my judgments to rest for a light of the people. My righteousness is near. So it hasn't come yet. My salvation is going forth. The Lord Jesus Christ. That's God's righteousness. My arm shall judge the people. The isles shall wait upon me and on my arm. Shall they trust? Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look un upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke. Hmm. So, what NASA is doing and all that is going to be gone. All those spacecrafts and pictures and you know those beautiful pictures. I mean, those, those are some beautiful pictures that the Hubble is taking. Taken. There is some beauty out there that where man is not supposed to see. Let's say there was no. Listen, I give a lot of credit for Hubble for those pictures. But let's say there was no Hubble. Think of all that beauty that we that we have seen that we shouldn't see that God has seen, and He said they're going to vanish away like smoke one day. The earth shall wax old like a garment. And they that dwell therein shall die like manner. All people will die. 
for the wages of sin is death. The earth grows old because of the curse placed upon it. Do you realize in Genesis 3, had they not eaten the fruit, there would be no curse upon this earth, and this earth would be like a, a forever young planet with all resources possible forever. There would be so much gold, you, you walk on it like the streets of gold in New Jerusalem. There'd be so much silver, the kids would pick it up off the streets of Jerusalem and use it as a ball to play stickball. Sound familiar? But my salvation shall be forever, the Lord Jesus Christ. There is God's salvation mentioned as eternal in the book of, of the Old Testament. And my righteousness, as Jesus Christ, shall not be abolished. You're not going to get rid of Jesus Christ. Hearken unto me again. Ye that know righteousness, the people whose heart is my law, you do what God tells you to do, you try to do, we're all sinners. Fear ye not. That's reading, we're reading today in the Psalms, and there are just sins in my life coming up, and just repenting. The reproach of men. Neither be ye afraid of their reviling. Don't be afraid of men, but we all are. We fear men because we see man and we don't see God. Then we lose faith. The face of the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For the moth shall eat them up like a garment. You know, it, it's funny like that. Uh, my wife put a dress on the other day and and she noticed that a moth had gone in there and had a, had a salad. In some cases, you don't even know that the moth has done its work until you actually try to use it. And you're not going to know that men are going, some men die until, you know what, there's a lot of people, it wasn't for their job, you know, they're important being at work. Some people just be in their house dead for weeks, maybe months. There's been cases. There's been cases where, uh, you know, you walk by a street and there's a foul odor. And the police come and the fire department come and they find a guy sitting there in his chair watching the TV, watching him, the remote control, he's been dead for days. No one ever cared. He had nowhere of, of an importance. That there, there are old people who fall down, can't get no help, and they die there. Of no importance. Unless something is needed, unless they're causing a disturbance. Oh, that person. And the worm shall eat them like wool. And that's what happens inside the coffin, it's in the grave, you get eaten up. But my righteousness shall be forever. And that's Jesus Christ. Forever. My salvation, Jesus Christ, from generation to generation. Awake! Awake! Put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake! Must be important. Somebody must be asleep. As in the ancient days, in the generations of old, Art thou not it that has cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? Mm. In references to Egypt, I, I mean Exodus, excuse me. Oh yeah, Egypt and the Exodus. Are thou not it which has dried the sea? You know, that's the Red Sea. The waters of the great deep that have made the depths of the sea away for the ransom for the ransom to pass over when was he when was Israel ransom between the night of Passover and the Red Sea when they came out of Egypt they were ransomed under the blood of the lamb when God says when I see the blood not only will I pass over you, not only will I allow the destroyer to come in, but I will ransom you. Watch this. Therefore the redeemed, ransomed and redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion. Not today. 
Many Jews today don't even want to go back to Israel. They rather stay where they are. And everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. And that's not today. There are still, listen, there are families crying because of a Jewish family member who has died of natural causes. You know why you, you cry at a funeral? If you're lost? Because you have no hope. You have no idea what that person is you're about to bury. You may deny God. You may call yourself an atheist. You don't believe in nothing. And you don't have anything to do with God in the Bible. But when you weep at that grave. You are saying to yourself. You believe in God. And you have no hope. in that person that's in that grave. I, even I, am he that comforteth you. The comforter. So we see God, we see the Lord Jesus Christ, and we see the Holy Spirit in chapter 51. Who art thou, that thou shouldst be afraid of a man that shall die? Not putting your faith in man. We've been talking about these, these religious relics. We've been talking about these religious items and icons and, uh, and ideology. They are made by sinners. You're going to worship a sinning creation? And we already read, you know, you, you cook bread on it and you heat yourself and you're going to turn the rest of it into a god. God is telling you in chapter 51, after all what we read, turn to me. I'm the comfort, not a piece of wood. I am your joy. I am your redemption. I am your righteousness. I am your salvation. I am your ransom. So what did Jesus come when he came to the Jews? What did he keep on saying? I am. I am. I am. And they kept saying, no, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. And of the Son of Man, which shall be made as grass. Death. Mold down and cut up and forgotten. And forget is the Lord thy maker, that has stretched forth his heaven. And laid the foundation of the earth. You know, the Bible keeps speaking about the foundations of the earth. You ever wonder what those foundations are? It speaks of another place of the pillars of the earth. It says it's going to be founded. One day we're going to see what this earth is made of. Some people call it the city of Atlantis, I guess. I don't know. That's going to be something to see. The foundations and the, the, and the pillars of the earth. And has feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor, as if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? The captive exile hastens that he may be loose, and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. I mean, he just wants to live. He'll do anything he can to live. But I am the Lord thy God, that divideth the sea, where the nation began, whose waves roared. It just, according to the scripture, the Bible says that those waves has made a sound. Must have been a wonderful event to see that water part and hear the sound of a mighty, mighty waterfall. And we, back in, in Norwich, we, we've heard it all with the storms and the, and the melting in ice. There was a waterfall there, and it was just beautiful. The Lord of hosts is his name. That's who brought you out of bondage. The Lord of hosts. Not wood, not stone. And I have put my words in thy mouth.
The Old Testament is written to the, the Hebrews. Kept by the Hebrews. Exalted by the Hebrews. And I have covered thee with the shadow of my hand. That I may plant the heavens. And lay the foundations of the earth. And say unto Zion. Thou art my people. Awake. Awake. Stand up, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem must be sleeping. With a, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Now, when you get these cups in the Bible, you're going to realize there are nations and there are individuals. There's a religion. That is a cup. And it's filled with filthiness, sin, and vile. And it just gets filled, it gets filled, and it gets filled, and it gets filled. And then one, once that thing starts overfilling, then that's it. Then the Lord steps in and pronounces judgment. Israel has a cup. It has been filled with idolatry. It has been filled with bestiality. It has been filled with adultery. It has been filled with violence. It has been filled against the law. And one day in Jeremiah's time, it's going to come and it's just going to pour over and then in comes Nebuchadnezzar. Thou hast drunken the dregs. That's the bottom, the scum of the bottom, of the cup of trembling and wrung them out. Psalm 75, 6 through 8, 6, 60, verse 30. Jeremiah 25, 15 through 30. Jesus Christ drank of a cup. Of all the dregs and all the filth of all the sin in the world. What was that cup? Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin. Not sin. The sin of the world. Every single sin was put in that cup. Didn't Jesus in his prayer to the Lord in the garden say to accept this cup pass? That cup wasn't death. That cup was all the judgment, all the filth, all the sin that man has done since Adam. To the last man that ever will be. From the, from the time that Adam was created in Genesis 3, the first sin of disobeying God's, God's law and word, and ever since Eve changed the word of God, Genesis 3, to the last man that dies with sin, that's all the sin that Jesus Christ took in that cup, placed upon him. At that point, when God turned the heavens off, turned his back, that's when the cup was applied. That's when the sin was put upon Jesus Christ. That was the cup. Death was no problem for him. He gave up the ghost. He couldn't give up the, the ghost until all the sin was paid. There is none to guide her among all the sons whom she has brought forth. They don't know nothing today. They don't even know what tribes they are from. They can guess. Nehemiah and Ezra records that there's, there's a group of people... They can't find their genealogy. They can't find their certification. So until they bring the people with the records and all that, they're excu excluded. That's where they are today. They don't know who they are. Neither is there any that taketh her by the hand of all the sons that she has brought up. These two things are come unto thee. Who shall be sorry for thee? Desolation and destruction. Listen, if you want something, you want to be ransomed and redeemed, verses 10 and 11. You don't want desolation and destruction. Desolation means you're made all by yourself. You're alone. And destruction is whatever you got left will be gone broken apart and famine no food 
and the sword war well if you're left alone there's destruction and you can have no food to eat and their war coming you're not going to fight because you're all by yourself it's already been destroyed you, you're too famished to even to lift yourself up and that's the description of when Nebuchadnezzar comes into Babylon they break through the hole of a wall and they, and they start fleeing by whom shall I comfort thee thy sons have fainted they lie at the head of all the streets bodies everywhere as a wild bull in a net they are full of the fury of the Lord the Lord is angry red hot bull so you know what people do today they go they try to beat God by having to run into the bull isn't it just so sad that this guy got gorged? No, you shouldn't have been doing it in the first place, idiot. And when you see one person, when he does get gorged and the injuries result, and the bull doesn't say, oh, I'm so sorry I did that. No, the bull goes out for more. That's the Lord. They are full of the fury of the Lord and the rebuke of thy God. God's doing... Now listen, God is doing desolation, he's doing destruction, he's doing famine, he's doing the sword, he's making them faint, he's like a wild angry bull because he's rebuking them to do right. Nehemiah got, or is it Ezra, one I forget, I think it's Ezra, man he got so angry at the congregation for marrying uh, strange women, he starts pulling their hair out of their beards. When's the last time you heard a preacher in America get that angry? You have him arrested for assault. When's the last time you had a, a campfire meeting under a tank with hell? fire preaching with no googads and doodads and toys and games and anything like that and get five-year-old child convicted under hell under damnation under sin and then turn to God without anything extra you got to have an angry preacher who hates sin who hates the devil who wants you to get right with God you ain't going to do it no pansy, wansy, fruity, tooty preaching. Therefore, hear now this. Hear this now. Thou afflicted. All right? You're already afflicted. Listen. And drunken. And I don't think that's drunken as intoxication. And then it goes back to verse 17. The cup of the Lord. Because it says, but not with wine. So you're talking about the fury of the Lord here. Now listen. Thus said. He says, therefore hear now. Thus saith thy Lord. It's important. The Lord and thy God. That pleadeth the cause of his people. Israel. Behold I have taken out of thy hand. The cup of trembling. Even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. One day he's going to take that cup away. And that cup is going to be taken away at the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number 35, 31 to 33 in Matthew 27, 24. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee. The Antichrist. The goat nations that do not help them in the tribulation. Them that curse thee, I will curse. Here it is here again. Which have said to thy soul, Bow down, that we may go over. Thou hast laid thy body as the ground, and as the street to them that went over. 
And what is he saying there? Lie down. So we can run you over and kill you. Lie down. Bow down before us. At the sound of the chat book, the, sh the clarinet and all that, fall down and worship my golden image, Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach. Not? I'm going to throw you in that fire. How dare you pray that prayer into the lion's den? That's what it's about. Israel is getting correction. If a, if a Jewish person, individual today, dies without Christ, he will go into hell. They are being rebuked. But later on at the second advent, the Lord Jesus Christ, as a nation that is left, as a corporate, God will remove their sins. He will redeem them again. He will ransom them again. Not from Pharaoh, but from the Antichrist. And bring them like Joshua did in the same way that Moses brought them. Like Joshua, he will carry them over to Jordan. And all the twelve tribes will come over. Not not two and a half tribes. But not, you know, we'll only go halfway. It's like the rapture of the church. At the rapture of the church, all saved Christians will go, not half Christians. There is no such thing as half Christian. Either you're saved or you're not saved. So Israel is being rebuked. They are being chastised. Yet the gospel is witnessed to them today still, just as much as the Gentile. And God will redeem Israel one day as a, as a nation, as a group of people. And he's trying to get them to remember Exodus. Why? That's when they became a nation. That is the very start of their historical start. And God says, look back to them. Remember, look at what I've done for you. I can do it again. 